resurrected from the dead. Hallelujah! I come to declare the decree Hallelujah. Today I want to share with you one of the visions about my encounter with angels and more specifically my personal guardian angels. In uh, Hebrew chapter 1 verse 13 and 14 it is written but to which of the angel has he ever said sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet are they not all ministering spirits sent out to render service for the sake of those who will inherit salvations. We also read about angels in Psalm chapter 91, where God said he will send his angel to look after his servants, and in their hand there shall hold even your feet, that it may not be hurt by the stones. It's very interesting to say that angels is God's messenger, ministering spirit that was created by God. They're not human, but they are messengers with minimum two kind. They are a celestial beings and in the Bible we can read about this angel or angelos. One kind or one group is called the seraphim angels. You know it's almost like a, a tribe. And the other tribe is Cherubim, Cherubim or Cherub. Some angels have six wings. Some angels look like just a normal human beings. But then there's also angels or they call it creatures, four living creatures in the throne of God. In the book of Revelation, chapter 1 and chapter 2, you can read four living creatures. The first living creature looked like a, a lion, the face. The second one looked like a calf. The third looked like an eagle. 
and the fourth one just look like a man. Now, if you happen to encounter a creature which have the face of a eagle huh, or a lion, you may be scared to and thought that that is evil. No, but it's all written there in the Bible. And we can see on the earth animals is sort of reflection of who they are. But they are not animals. Angels are ministering spirit. They are spirit beings, but sometimes they manifest themselves when God commanded them to do so, and it is the will of God to do so. So you might encounter them and you call it vision encounter or vision of the night or dreams encounter. But there are also fallen angels. Fallen angels turn to be the enemy of God. They are so-called Satan, the devil, the accuser. And they, they have been led by one particular former ass angel that was fallen. They become the master of spirits, demons, evil spirits. They are not demons. They are not evil spirit, but rather they are fallen angels. But they are the masters and the lord over demonic spirits. Now, I will, uh, if, if given a time about demonology, I will explain to you more on the difference between fallen angels and demonic spirit. And because they want to conquer and they want to overturn the authority of God, they were thrown out from heaven and now live even some in the earth and the atmosphere of the first heaven. We call it the sky. They can move. They are spirit. You cannot see them. The demons can possess even human beings. Remember when Jesus encountered the man who were possessed by a legion of spirit and Jesus asked what is your name and they said my name is legion because we are many and it possessed it can even possess wild animals it can hide and it, it can even enter into idols even pictures of idols and they can also control even nations remember Satan when tempted Jesus during his 40 days and 40 nights. Satan, that fallen angel, brought Jesus in the highest place and he showed to him all the glory of the world. And he said, all this kingdom, I will give it to you. I mean, he, Satan has certain power. If you bow down and worship me, means if you follow his way, his way of killing, destroying, and stealing the evilness. They said you can become rich. That is the lie of the devils. But I will speak more about it. They are fallen angels. But I'm talking about true angels that is with the Lord. They have rang at angels like Michael, archangel, a special messenger like the angel Gabriel, they have names. Some don't really display themselves. It's called angel of the Lord. Now, in this case, by the will of the Lord, God will allow his servant to see and encounter angels. The prophets have encountered many angels. I remember Elijah, Elisha the prophet, many times angel was sent to help them, even to bring food. You can imagine. And even in the time of the Lord Jesus Christ, angels stood, two angels stood in his tomb. And even the angel, when Christ went up to heaven in a Mount Olive, two angels witnessed and said, Hey, all you 
Why are you still? He was. They were talking to the disciples that's looking into the sky because Jesus just caught up, and he said, "Why are you looking? This same Jesus who you saw going up, will likewise one day come again in the same place in the same time that he went up in this place. Even in the resurrection, angel of God was there, and even the birth of Jesus." Angel Gabriel went to Mary to announce the birth of the Son of God in accordance to the prophecy of Isaiah that a virgin will bear a child. Angel Gabriel came to Daniel, the prophet, many, many times. Angel Gabriel bring messages from the throne of God. I remember in... Uh, Matthew chapter 2, how four times the angel of the Lord came to Joseph, the husband of Mary, in a dream. In a dream. Because the Holy Spirit, because this is one of the language of visions of the Holy Spirit, that in the last days, says God, he will pour out his spirit. Son and daughter shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. And your old men shall dream dream. This is not an ordinary dream. But we call it vision dreams according to Daniel chapter 7. It's a vision but in a dream. And this happened to Joseph four times. But I just quote one of them. In uh, Matthew chapter 2, verse 3, we read here, Now, when they had departed, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise, take the young child and his mother, flee to Egypt, and stay there until I bring you word, for Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. That means the Holy Spirit allowed, God allowed, angel of the Lord to enter into the realm of dreams. Now I believe many of us have dreamed. Now I am a dreamer. The Lord spoke to me many times and revealed vision to me. But also in dreams, he allowed me to see or he sent even his angel to me in a dream, just like Joseph. <laughs> this is very unique. My name is Joseph. That's my first given name when I was born. My baptism name is Joseph. And now we can read here also, Joseph, the husband of Mary. And remember in the, in the Old Testament, Patriarch Joseph, who became the number two in the kingdom of Egypt, he dreams a lot. We call him Joseph the dreamer, but he is a prophet that can interpret the dream of Pharaoh and his own dream. So there are kind of people who have that gift, God-given gift that God have to send or reveal something through dream. I am that kind. I don't know why Joseph is in that category that receive always visions or revelation through dreams. But I admit I am one, one of those being anointed by God to receive revelation through dreams. And this is what happened to Joseph. An angel of the Lord came to Joseph in a dream, not in an open vision that the angel of the Lord just showed himself. But he had to sleep. He has to sleep. Take time to sleep. And then his mind, his conscious mind, the Holy Spirit began to allow him to dream something, but it is real. Joseph slept for a while, 
And the angel of the Lord came to him in his dream. He dreamed. <laughs> and that is why I want to share with you that many times I've I, seen my angel with my physical eyes. They just, my, my spiritual eyes just opened and I saw them a few times. But also an angel of the Lord came to me in a dream. And more specifically, my guardian angels. In my life, as a servant of God for these past 43 years, God sent two angels, specifically two angels as my personal guardian angels, that, and they have been with me everywhere I go. Because as a servant of God, being anointed in this capacity as a seer, as a prophet, as an apostle to many nations. It is not by might nor by strength. I don't have legions of armies or securities whenever the Lord send me. Sometimes I travel alone. But many times when I go into mission work, it's always me and my wife. Or sometimes my daughters. Sons and daughters in the Lord. So we travel not in a big so-called group and troop. But rather the angel of the Lord was sent. People might not see them. Sometimes they manifest themselves. But they are there with me to protect me. Today I have the privilege to share a little bit about my guardian angels. Now, one night I one night in 2007 I had uh, a dream. But like I said, the angel of the Lord came to me in a dream. So in this particular occasion in 2007, I was in that dream of the spirit where in this dream the Holy Spirit brought me into a particular province in a strange land I don't even know and uh, I saw myself walking on a small country type of roads you know a country roads that don't have cement it's really a country roads and like a hilly type and people are walking by riding on a two-wheel chart ridden by a cow you know the chart ridden by a cow it's passing by and I saw myself walking and they're also passing and after walking some time it's like in this dream I saw myself walking to towards a certain destination in which I'm not so sure because the revelation of the Lord began to unfold step by step. But I'm very sure. It's like I saw myself walking toward a certain destination. And after a while, I reached a certain place where on my right, I saw a road go going down. And I saw a hall, a multi-purpose hall. You know, when you are in that kind of village scenery, many times the government might build some sort of a multi-purpose hall for the communities. So that is what I saw. And I heard people talking. And I turned to the right. I go down a little bit. I want to enter into that hall. I want to see who are there. And the hall was filled with, packed with people. I think 50 people or close to 100 people. But the multi-purpose hall was packed, full of people. They were sitting and listening to some man who was talking in front, speaking to them. And I was curious enough to know who are there and I want to join because I want to listen to this man voice of a man who is talking and i want to know 
you know so i draw and i walk towards the, the front door and when i go to the front door i saw in my left on my right people are just sitting watching and listening attentively towards a speaker in the stage i mean in the front so i want to know who is this person i saw two figures two men one person looked like a man on the stage and he was writing something on a big white board he was busy writing something while another speaker was not on the stage but just in front of the stage standing on the left side of the crowd and he was talking now that's the sound that i've been hearing i've been hearing before i enter that's the sound of this man whom i saw and i want to hear him what he got to say and why he want to say so i wanted in my heart i wanted to go and sit in the most front pew or chair of it all so that i thought to myself i can listen more clearly what he is about to say and so i began to walk in the middle people are sitting on the left on the right i walk in the front i walk in the middle because i want to go and sit down in the front my mind was saying i need to sit down on the left side so i began to walk and walk and walk when i reached the middle then suddenly the angel of the lord stopped now i can tell you it's the angel of the lord because after this dream i realized that it's the angel of the lord from the distance as i grow nearer and closer to the middle i began to see them these figures They look like men, but they wear white robes. Both of them wear white robes. Remember, one of them, which now I can tell you that that's surely the angel of the Lord, was busy writing on the stage with a big white board. He was writing and writing and writing. Whereas the other one was not on the stage, what? but just in front of the stage on the on the left side and he is also wearing a robe and he was speaking and speaking and speaking the the speaker looked like he has a golden hair golden color of hair the other one on the stage has a black curly hair with a beard with a beard here And I knew that this is not an ordinary man. Instantly, I have the knowledge that this is angels of the Lord. That was my first ever encounter with my guardian angels. Because I will be sharing to you more about them when I saw them for the second time and for the third time. The second time I saw them was when I was in Germany on mission. In the country of Germany, I saw them again, and the third time I saw these two angels were in my office, bishop's office. I'm sitting here in my office now, eh? In my shop, I saw them again years ago, so I'm very sure. But on other occasion, I saw many angels. There are many angels, especially when I was praying in a sort of a jungle type of area alone and i saw them a lot of them surrounding me they just stand surrounding me all wearing in white robe more than 50 i think hundreds of them when i'm praying in the jungle you know i'm a man who love to pray in the jungle i go to the jungle sometime and stayed in the jungle for one week or two weeks in the early days And fast and pray alone in the jungle. I dare to go. I just have faith that God will 
protect me by his angel and I've seen them protecting me surrounding me you read Psalm chapter 91 and you understand what I mean but back to these dreams I was going in front and then suddenly this angel stopped talking to the people to the crowd and then he began to move a little bit in the middle and now I am in the middle he is in front in the middle and he looked at me and I was a bit stunned and I look at him and immediately he point his finger like this pointing to me and he opened up his mouth and speak now in my second video which I recorded earlier in uh, my hotel when I was in Lampang I will continue this sharing about this angel walking I reached to the middle of the hall now you must know everybody was sitting and people attentively listening to this one man talking so some of them did not even bother to turn on the right or to the left to see that I'm, I'm walking the aisles it's like I'm walking because the whole crowd was very attentive listening to this speaker now what I saw was there's a stage and on the stage, there's one man wearing a white clothes, robe. His hair is black curly with a beard, you know, beard, but very strong man. And he has a white board, big white board. And he was writing something. He was writing on the white board. He's busy writing. And the second man was not on the stage, but just on the floor. That is the speaker. He is the one that I heard far away, very loud. He was speaking. And I don't remember. But now I remember he was speaking in English language. Talking to these people and everybody was glued to his speech. This second man also wear a white robe. But his hair is like goldish, curly goldish. And the robe they wear is not ordinary robe, it's white, but like shining. Now, while the other man, I thought he's a man, was busy writing on, the, on this white board, you know, white kind of board, this man was talking and talking to the crowd and suddenly, he saw me because I was already in the middle of that hall. I'm about to, you know, sit down. Or I want to walk a little further in the front. And I thought I want to sit down to listen to this person. Suddenly this gold color hair man is not a female point his hand, his right hand, and point to, point to me. He point like this. And when he pointed to me, I, I just stopped in the middle of the hall. And he opened up his mouth. And everybody, at the moment when this man point his hand like this, everybody on my left, on my right, on my back, on the front, everybody began to look at me. This one is on my left, right. Everybody look. Because the angel of the Lord pointed like this. Oh, I'm telling you. And he opened up his mouth. And you know what he said? He said, 
this man, he said, this man, pointing to me, is destined to bear fruit. This man is destined to bear fruit. This man. And everybody was looking and, oh, I said, what? Wow. Now everybody know I am here. Because when I falsely enter, everybody was listening to this man. But then when he pointed his hand, he's right there like this, pointing to me and spoke. This man is destined to bear fruit. And everybody's looking. And after he spoke that, then I wake up from the vision and he's gone. And when I prayed, then the Holy Spirit just revealed to me that that is my angels. That is the first encounter in 2007. And in a couple of years again, I saw the same angel. When I was ministering in Germany many years ago. And then the latest one, when I, about uh, two years ago in my office, in my shop, you know, my personal office, I was praying in the early morning, daytime, and I saw these two men again. Two men, and now the Holy Spirit revealed to me, it's just, it's not a man. Why I, I refer them as a man? Because they are not women. They are angels. The Holy Spirit revealed to me that these two is my guiding angel being sent by God the Father to minister to me and to protect me. Everywhere I go. The third time I saw was about two years ago. There they are. Guiding the entrance of my office. One on the right and one, one on the left. Just if you see my office, I have two red pillars. In the middle is the door. So they are standing right in these two pillars. And it was so clear. The same angel. On my right is this angel who have like golden hair. And white. And like this. You can even see the, the hair the color is like gold. And the other one is standing also on the left of my office. Very big. They are not like men. They are like 12 feet tall. Something like they are very tall, well built, very strong. The other, the other angel is black hair, curly, and he have a have a beard like this, have a beard like and, and like this. When I look at this angel, they look like a man, but they are not a man. They are angels of God. That was the third time I saw them. The second time was in Germany. But in 2007, that was the first time that I saw them. And after that vision in 2007, the character of the angel is similar to my character. You know, if you know my story, when God called me in the ministry in 1982, I don't speak fluent English. No. <laughs> I'm just a graduate high school guy who are very fluent in Indonesian language and Bahasa language and my tribal language from the island of Borneo, the Kadazan. But you can see now, when I speak to you or when I preach, I don't use uh, books or speech. It just come out according to the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. We call this kind of people as oracle. You know, in Bahasa Malaysia mean pidato. He don't need a script. He don't need a prepared notes. It's inside your brain. He can speak without any uh, prompter a written screen. No, he speak out of his intelligence. And this is what the angel do. This angel speak and speak and speak and speak. And finally he pointed his hand like this and said, this man is destined to bear fruits. And I accepted it. I said, Lord, I accept that. Let it be. Let the will of the Lord happen to me that whoever in contact with me, I will bear fruit. I will bear fruit. All right. 
I am destined. Destined mean ordained to be a man to bear the fruits of righteousness, the fruits of good things, the fruits in the kingdom of God. Good works are my fruits because I'm a man who fear God. Even though I am a sinner, I fell down many, many times in my life, but it doesn't mean that I, I'm an evil man. No. And I am in my late 50s now, next year, I'm going to turn 60. And all I want to do is good works to men. Preach the gospel because lost souls need to be saved and they to know Jesus who is so that their life will be changed and transformed to be a better man when they become a child of God or follower of Christ. Because Christ came to give life and abundance and blessing. And my mouth and my task as a servant, as a prophet of the Lord, sent into many nations, is to preach the good news that Jesus Christ died for us and are repentant to be preached. And when you believe in Christ and begin to follow his teaching, you become a righteous man that is worthy to come into the presence of God, the Almighty, the Lord of hosts, Elohim, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, so that your name will be written in the book of life that when we go home in heaven with our Creator, Heavenly Father. That's my task. That's my job. And I want people to be fruitful in life, not to get involved with evilness, and a peaceful man to make peace with everybody. And these angels have the attributes like me. It's like the DNA of this angel is in me. As the angel was talking, he don't use, you know, speech. No. Teleprompter. No. He just speak like this. And this. And then he pointed to me. When I preach, even though I am a theologian, I have studied humanitics, hemolotica, the, the art of speech. But then, when I grow old, it's automatic by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Like I'm talking to you now. I'm not, I didn't follow any script. <laughs> but I can talk to you my point because I am an oracle being anointed by God. I am not as fluent as you hear me speak in English today. Because my education in the world is, I am not English educated. But, when those angels speak English in this vision, I began to be very fluent in my English. And when these angels speak in oracle without script, you can see when I preach around the world, when you see my video, I preach not by word, script, teleprompter, no. I speak exactly like the DNA of an angel. I speak about kingdom of God from my intelligence and from my wisdom, from the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, I prophesy. No wonder I'm a good speaker. No wonder I prophesy through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. We call it oracle. He just speak oratory without preparing anything. You can give me a podium, give me a microphone, and I can speak to you two hours without any problem. It's just the word just came because this angel is the one who bring the message from the Holy Spirit. Inspiring me. Sometimes I hear the voice of the angel talking. And sometimes I hear the voice of the Holy Spirit talking what I need to speak. And when I open my mouth, prophecy come, revelation come. And I just speak and speak and speak and speak. <laughs> I, I'm very talkative when I am the, under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And you know what? The second angel, with a black hair, he loved to write and write and write and write and write and keep on writing. That's why I authored four books. I authored in my life four books. Some is 400 pages in other language and the other is in English. When I start to write my book, it's like my hand is non-stop. Just writing and writing and writing and writing according to what the angel, this one angel is giving me instruction of what I need to write because they receive the message from the Holy Spirit and they inspire me. Sometimes the Holy Spirit speaks, inspire, but then the angel of the Lord also bring this message to my spirit and I begin to write. Sometimes 
When I wrote this book, Holy Ghost First Chronicles, you better get it. I can send ebook to you. I just need $10 love gift. <laughs> I wrote like almost 300 pages. I When I write this book, within one month, 30 days, a total of almost 300 pages. I write like eight hours a day. Eight hours a day writing my books. And all the revelation, the prophetic, the message from the angel, and the inspiration of really began to come to my brain. And I began to write nonstop for eight hours every day. Can you write within a month 300 pages? You cannot do it. A lot of research. But because I had the help from my other angel who loved to write. That's why I love to write. In my Facebook, in books, I write a lot. You know, I'm a composer of song in Kazakhstan language. I compose and accept it in Malaysia, in the radios, more than 200 songs. I compose a song, I sing the song. Why? To, to create the relics. You can imagine 220 songs. You know how many thousand words? But when I write my relics, I don't copy and paste. I just get inspired what I need to write. Some are spiritual song, songs about so many things, just like King Solomon who wrote 1,005 song in his lifetime and 3,000 proverbs. Because of the spirit of wisdom come upon me and because of the assistant of, of the angel, one of the angel giving me all this message, I began to write my songs. Even the Malaysia Book of Record acknowledged that I am the, the first Kadazan who composed over 100 over songs and it was I was awarded the Kazakhstan single writer in a Malaysia book of record, which is similar to Guinness book of record, is written. Where did I get all this inspiration of writing and writing, writing songs, 200 over songs? And you know how many thousand of words in that relic of the song? It is amazing because I have a help. I had been helped by my angel. And since then, wherever I go, Whenever I am in the situation where the door is so closed that I could not preach, I will say, Father, send you angels. I dispatch your guardian angel to protect my way, to help me. And they began to talk to people just like the, the angel of the Lord speaking to Cornelius to look for Peter. I will tell you in another vision, it happened to me. <laughs> And this is what we call divine vision and revelation that has transformed my life. I'm just sharing to you the first time. This is the vision of me meeting my angel. If, if another time I will tell you how uh, for the second time these two angels manifest themselves in Germany during the time when I am in the spiritual war the demons, the presence of the evil spirit, until I cannot sleep until four o'clock in the morning. And that was in Germany. In Germany, when I was in Germany, you know, I preached in Germany. And the angel of the Lord came and everything calmed down and I was able to sleep like a baby. Oh, I thank God for sending. And I pray to you, whether you are apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastors, or saints, I pray that God will open your eyes. And when you ask, Father, send your angel to protect me, he will be there. Now, is it a truly angel or demons or angel of light? Because apostle Paul said, angel, even the demons can be turned to be angel of light. The proof is in, found in John chapter 15 let me read this to you in the book of John the gospel of John this is the word of Jesus in John chapter 15 now look at this this is to confirm to you that this angel who said this man is destined to bear fruit is a test if you want to test whether this is the word that the Holy Spirit put in the mouth of this angel to talk about me,
to testify. He's an angel to testify about who I am. Okay? You can find in the book of John, chapter 15. Look at this. Chapter 15. You see? Jesus said, I am the true wine. My father is the wine dresser. Verse 2. Every branch in me that does not bear fruits, does not bear fruits, he takes away and every branch that bear fruit, every branch that bear fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. Verse 3. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me and I in you as the branch cannot bear fruits. Again, he said, Jesus said, that a branch cannot bear fruits unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. Verse 5. I am the vine. You are the branches. He who abide in me and I in him bear much fruit. Listen to the word of Jesus. For without me, you can do nothing. How many times Jesus said, bear fruit, bear fruit. I am the vine. You guys, child of God, prophets of God, are like the branch. And Father is the farmer, the vine dresser. And we have to prune the branches from all the nonsense leaves and all the, uh, the flesh so that you can bear fruits. Abide in me and I in you, then you will bear fruit fruits and you know what the angel said about me he pointed to me like this and he said this man is destined to bear fruits now you know it's biblical i know for sure that that is the angel of the lord because they speak the same language of jesus and let me tell you something this is the first time i never heard any man in my 50 over years Speak this word like this. This is the only occasion where I heard the voice, not from man, but an angel of the Lord speaking and pointing and said, This man is destined to bear fruit. And I have seen the fruit of my life, the good work. I have seen when people come to me and lies with me and follow the teaching and together. I've seen their life change and bearing fruit of success in life. I know whoever get in touch with Bishop Josiah today and be a son, a disciple, and follow my instruction and my wisdom because I'm not young. This year is like 43 years in a full-time ministry. So I have a lot of wisdom experience and when you obey and listen to my word i know that you will be successful and prosper and bearing fruits in all things that you do because i'm a man who can motivate you to become a good man but a faithful servant of jesus christ filled with the holy spirit of god the spirit of knowledge and wisdom so that you can also be a generation that bearing fruit for God because we have the same root. We have the same tree, Jesus Christ. The foundation of the gospel and the kingdom of God is Jesus Christ. I am only the branch. But if you want to see the fruit in my life, people who know me, the Lord has made me prosper. My family, my wife. We have been bearing much good fruits. You remember Jesus said, You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. You are the salt of the earth. If the soul lost its saltiness, what does it mean being trampled? He said, Let your light, Jesus said, Let your light shine before men that they may see your good works and praise your Father in heaven. You don't need to hide. Good works... You know, good works, not bad works. Good works are fruits. Jesus desires us to be fruitful. Don't just follow Jesus. All his commandments, but you never bear the fruits. Otherwise, they will cut you off. 
Because Christ, when He invested something in your spirit, He expected it like a seed, the Word of God, that will grow in your life and you will be fruitful when you become obedient unto Him. I am fruitful in my 50 years. In everything, God has blessed me spiritually. God has blessed me financially. God has blessed me with a wonderful family and my ministry. The Lord has blessed me. The blessing of the Lord has made me rich. Last time I left everything, even though I came from a quite a well-known wealthy family in Sabah. You know, Wong Lung generation. You know, we are the generation of the Wong Lung. But Kadazan, my father inherited and gave lands to us. But when I left everything, I start from zero, but 50 years later, I have land, properties, car, family. I have my own office. The ministry grow. That's the fruit, the good fruit. Because I am bearing the fruit. I am on the top of the mountains. And it will help me even to more further travel and preach. My message is the same. As the angel of the Lord has given me messages and, of, and Holy Spirit and books, and, and teaching. I'm a theologian. I'm a lecturer. A university in Africa gave me a title as professor. I'm a professor in pneumatology and eschatology. These are because the angel of the Lord assists me in writing books of revelation. So that the intelligence and the wisdom that I have is not man made up. No. That is why in this Vision, one of the seven visions that I want to show to you. I just want to tell you this, that when you walk and be led by the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will allow a system to come to you when you, you needed it. Because man is limited. Oh, man may disappoint you. They offer their help, assistance, even tithes, love offering, but they are not faithful. But then I have the help from the above. A divine creature that is angels and until today these two angels is with me when people want to fight me the angel of the Lord will go ahead to fight for me you read Psalm 91 and you will understand he said God is will send his angel I believe every child of God is born again the minute they follow Jesus God in heaven has instruction, instructed at least one angel to guide you until you go back to heaven. It's up to you whether you want to listen or not. If you cannot see them, pray that God will show you and you are able to hear just like the angel speak to Philip, just like the angel speak to Cornelius, and just like the angel who spoke to Jacob and Joseph and Angel of the Lord came to Christ and even to Paul, Apostle. Many times, Angel of the Lord came to Peter. And they are here with us to help us in our life, in our ministry. Bring message, messages from God. I'm not scared of my angel. Because it's biblical. Whatever the angel speak, Jesus also spoke. You must bear fruit. And I'm glad to be an honor, to be one of those mouthpiece of God that every man who ever get in touch with us, with Bishop Josiah, I know you will be fruitful. Because we never teach you wrong thing. We teach you the way of God, how to prosper in life, how to be successful in life. I have been successful, being blessed, and my family because of the help from heaven intelligent to do business intelligent to inherit him. God will not send money from heaven if you ask but he will give you wisdom revelation truth to resolve the situation and to create an opportunity to generate good fruits and you will add eat good fruits in life and enjoy life wow i pray in the name of jesus 
you will have a divine encounter with your angels. You are divine. You have a divine encounter of the Holy Ghost speaking to you in dream visions. I pray that from now on, if men leave you, unable to help you, look to heaven. The angel of God is coming to serve you and to help you in preaching the gospel and living a life that is fruitful, successful, whether in business, in politics, in economy, in family, you have angelic being to help you. God bless you.